This is Entervoid.com's VCast. Entervoid is the world's premier comics battling website. It's a place for artists of all skill levels who love comics to hone their skills through competition and collaboration. Check us out on Entervoid.com. This episode was recorded on March 17th, 2019. Can you stop ripping up emails while I'm trying to talk? Wait, what? I no, know I'm what. My sister. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking. I'm like I'm talking, and then all I hear is the envelope tearing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, what? The Astro's like, hey, AFK for a minute. I gotta go beat my family member. <laughs> Same consolation. We don't hear it here in the recording. Okay, good. Okay, never mind. They couldn't hear it. Sorry. <laughs> but we did hear the dogs skedaddling over the linoleum. Hi everyone, and welcome to Vcast. This is the one that you skip through just to listen to your own comic review. We know who you are. Wink. This is Pyrus Taren. And I'm Astro Dial. And with us today, uh, Cozy Spoon. Hey, guys. And first time on VCast, uh, the one and only Boogity Bizdo. Hi. Yeah. Hey, can we get the <laughs> children saying yay yeah, SFX here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, like, add that so in. Like, There's just a eggs. bunch of sound effects of eggs cracking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Buddy Bizio. As you know, we're uh, big fans of your comics, and it's great to have Thanks. you on. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I actually, I actually have a question for you, Boogie. Um, how do we pronounce your username? You've been pronouncing it right. It's really Boogie Bizio. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Take it to the bank, boys. I'm the winner. Oh my god! <laughs> Great. Um, uh, for today, uh, we are going to be doing a Q and A for the first topic of discussion. We actually have a uh, a bunch of questions, some serious, some not so serious, that we're just going to go ahead and answer right here on air. Oh boy, I love Qs and A's. Hell yeah. <laughs> And if you want to send them, you can send them over to me on Void or on Discord. I'm Astro or Astrodial. Or you can send them to your host, Pyrus. Or me, especially me. <laughs> I'm going to be reading these. Okay, so just going to kick things off, yeah? Yeah, let's do it. Kick it! Okay, so first question we received. Also, all these questions are anonymous, so you're all safe. Unless you're saying something nasty, then I'm watching you. <laughs> um, so, if peeps are interested in quick events, like mini spontaneous tournaments between voiders, and is there a thread that we can make for this somewhere that we can start these little mini events? Anonymous user says that they participated in one some time ago, and it was three pages each time per battle, with a one-week deadline, and it was between six full. They suggested that it could be fun to have these kinds of mini tournaments that could take place once again. Like, first you have a short poll to see who is interested, and then six people is pretty much all you could even need, and then voila, that's your own mini tournament right there. So, what are you guys' thoughts on having like these little mini tournaments for fun? Hmm. Uh, you can go ahead and start, Boogity, if you have any um... opinions on it. I, I don't think I understand. Is a mini tournament different from a regular tournament? Um, That's a good it's question. probably really just different in name only in that a mini tournament would be something that's much quicker than what you'd expect <clears throat> from a regular tournament. Most regular tournaments take uh, about uh, at minimum around six weeks uh, to go and could be longer. A mini tournament would be something that would uh, be within the span of a month or shorter and probably involve a fewer amount of people than the usual eight. Oh, um, so so they're more highly selective and who gets in and stuff? It would probably depend on who starts the tournament. Some people may okay. want to let anyone in, first come, first serve. Some people may want uh, uh, folks with a better record to go in. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's a good idea, like, my attitude is the more events the better and stuff so that there's always like lots of action hmm. okay what about you cozy well as someone who has totally participated in a sort of short restrictive tournament the first one that i think about is the light speed death tournament 
which was a restriction of three pages, and you had a week to work on it. And not only is it like super cutthroat, but it's super exciting to do something that fast and have to think of a story with the beginning, middle, and end with the restriction of three pages. I think that's a lot of fun. Okay, and Pyrus? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I we may have had threads. We have had threads in the past where people would talk about uh, different tournament ideas that they want to come up with. And if someone comes up with a really nice tournament idea, uh, they uh, pick it up from that thread and see where they can roll with it. There's really nothing stopping anyone from reviving a thread <clears throat> if, if they want to do something like that or making a new one uh, for tournament ideas like this. Mm -hmm. Really, the and only that can thing be done on the forums. Yeah, that could be done on the forums. Really, the only thing that's stopping is just the inactivity of the forums, because it's 2019 now. People are <laughs> using Discord. Get with the times. We live in a society. <laughs> but anyone is perfectly free to uh, come up with an idea, talk about it with people, see uh, if people are interested, and uh, send it over to us. Uh, I still have the uh, system there where people can send me any tournament. Uh, proposal they want and we can help set it up with them uh, just because the the schedule the tournament schedule is already full up with that with stuff doesn't mean you can't have your own uh, smaller events happening just uh, make just keep in mind that people will be participating in uh, other tournaments as well so depending on when you pick uh, the timeline for your event um, it may affect who's able to sign up. Okay. And I get the advantage here because I get to hear everyone's opinions and then make my super, super duper developed opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's the pirate's advantage that I get when we're doing reviewing comics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what's my opinion of this? Man, I don't know. I haven't been in the tournament before, but it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> super informed opinion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the best. I've I've seen tournaments, seen them come and go. Just look at them like, man, I guess I could join that, and then I don't. So uh, I would love to see more mini tournaments just because I want to see them. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, if I could just interject, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I got to find people to be a part of this and do a mini tournament. If you have a group of friends already on Void or even off of Void who are interested in joining and you want to start a tournament, you can totally do that. Absolutely. <laughs> so on the subject of like doing like these mini tournaments, um, would we be able to revive them in a way that it is they are imitations of official tournaments that we've had, such as like the invitational tournaments. Would the users be allowed to recreate those in their own mini fashion, miniature fashion? Uh, at the moment, it depends. It depends on the type of tournament that it is. I think there are some tournaments that we have that we sort of uh, retain a creative right to on the site, which may include invitational, which would include uh, Armageddon, um, but every year we're getting a little more lax with these rules, so you never know. Um, if you really want to try a light version of one of the official tournaments we've done in the past, just go ahead and ask, and uh, we'll see if uh, if it's something that we'll, we'd be a lot be, uh, up to do for that year. While we're on the subject, what is Armageddon? And what is that other one you mentioned? Boy, what is it? <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, the Invitational Tournament is a special tournament we do every two years or so where uh, folks can enter without having to make a intro comic uh, for their character, which is uh, the usually the biggest hurdle new members have when it comes to starting up on Void and starting making comics. They, get the, they have the character idea, they have everything ready for the character. But they kind of get stuck with the intro comic, or they take longer than they expect with the intro comic. The With the Invitational Tournament, you can just sign up with your character and you're ready to go, and you can start battling with that character right away as soon as you're done with the tournament. But it comes with a cost. <laughs> What's the cost? Oh my god. <laughs> no, you're explaining it! Explain it! <laughs> you just you just set up a rule that doesn't exist. What, what's the cost? I just wanted to scare people. <laughs> <laughs> you must answer these riddles three. There's no, no, there's, no online. <laughs> there's no cost. It's just um, 
if if there's if there's a drawback to it is that the battles for the tournament are one week, so they're really quick. So you gotta be uh, you gotta be quick. You gotta be on it. But once you're out of the tournament, if you win or lose, uh, you can still just keep on battling. You don't have to worry about an intro comic after that. Mm, and no. uh, concerning Armageddon, <laughs> Armageddon is uh, one of our super special events that. At the moment, I think we only release once every four years, where six of the cream of the crop members that we have are selected to go up against um, a character designed exclusively for that fight, an Armageddon threat, which is, uh, as you would expect from the name, a uh, character is designed to threaten the whole Void City canon. And the Armageddon threat is uh, usually by one of our uh, top members, sometimes someone who's, I guess you would say, alumni who've already made their mark on the site and are already doing professional comics or are pretty close or have been around long enough to to prove their worth. Mm. They take control of the void threat and it's up to those six uh members to work together to make a comic to defeat them man that sounds dope i still want to be in one of those man I if you're gonna be in one i want to be in it too there's one I right around the corner so everyone uh make some heavy breathing and get yourself noticed look no spo look like not saying any spoilers but you know i have ash right here and you know she's been looking for a battle and <laughs> Brennan, sounds mighty tasty Sorry. Ash is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on to the next question. Um, this is a void relative one. Uh, anonymous user asks, what genre do you want to see more of on void? Oh, that's an interesting one. I like that. You can go ahead and answer first, Booty. Um, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> 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 I think... Uh, all the genres are good and stuff. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, what's your favorite type of comic to read? Um, I don't really believe it or not. I don't really read comics. I'm just winging it. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> what What are your favorite kind of stories then? Um. Oh, uh, I just I I like ones with a lot of comedy in it. I guess. Mm. That makes sense. Comedy's good. And like, just ridiculous stuff. <laughs> what about you, Cozy? Genres. Genres of what I want to see. I definitely want to see more horror, more scary stuff. Which is exciting, because Astro Sean just fired up a short and sweet tournament, which I'm totally thrilled to see. It comes with like a fixed script. I have no idea what the script is going to be about, but to see it like interpreted by various people and get spooked before Halloween, and it's not October, I am down for that. <laughs> I want more action. I want lots and lots of just fighting. So you want early 2000 Void? <laughs> <laughs> I want early 2000 Void that's maybe a little more sensitive <laughs> to, little um, to cultures and demographics. But aside from that, yeah, I really want to see, uh, to see the Shonen trend come back. Um, I want to see... Wait, I I thought Shonen was like a uh, like romancy pulp novel sort of deal. That's a shoujo. Ah, okay. Yeah, Shonen Not is really Dragon Ball, Ball Z, Z uh, Bleach, Naruto, One Piece, I all see. that jazz. Yeah, I want to see people fighting for no reason again, <laughs> coming up with uh, creative fight scenes and creative victories. Can we talk about that? How much like the void sort of. I don't want to say like style, but I guess the genre popularity has really changed from like say 2000 to now. Yeah, the void oh, zeitgeist has gone through a lot. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, when I first came in, the action scene was just dying, and we mm. were going into sort of a slice of life uh, trend. When I came in, it was the the go to tried and true comic battle that tend to win like now i don't think it would even like stand a chance it was the meat cute the i have encountered you in a dark alley we're gonna fight now <laughs> yeah that's how it started people just fought for no reason 
<laughs> you you stepped on my shadow. Well, I must fight you. <laughs> you made fun of my hair, therefore pretty you much. Die. And then um then we had a slice of life trend going on, and those started to win more often because everyone got mm -hmm. tired of of fighting for no reason. People cared about plot. What about like the Aurora XD random funnies phase of void? Because there are a few like I would look at the random comic section and I'd see these like comics that are just LOL random XD roar teehee I'm so funnies. And yeah, like, <laughs> I don't think those ever get out of style. They is. they just same they just dip, dip in and out of of reality every now and then. Yeah, well, I've seen that it's been kind of a constant. Like in between all the style changes, there's always the comedy comic, which I super enjoy. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, lately, I think we've gotten into a lot more of the long-form narrative kind of uh, storytelling. Oh, gosh, which I both love and hate. I love it <laughs> because exhausting. I love reading. Yes, I love reading it. I love seeing it once it's done. But making it is just exhausting. It's definitely exhausting. So let's all go back to just beating each other up for no reason. <laughs> well, everyone, watch out. I'm on the street, and I'm ready. I'm so it's right It's time here. to throw down. It's, it's a dance to... fight. Let's do this. Throw Throw down, hoe down, I'm down with the clown, you know, I'm here for it. I'm gonna plug in once again that I wanna do a tournament arc tournament. What? What is that? Uh, you, you know the tournament arc in any anime where it's just oh, a whole saga God. of just people fighting? <laughs> Fair. Pretty much that. Yeah, I'm into it. Um, to answer the question, <laughs> what genre do oh, I Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have to answer. <laughs> Me! Um, here's the thing. So, I don't consume media a lot, so I don't know genres. So you could just throw anything at me and I'd be like, yeah, baby, we need more of that. Horror? Yeah, baby. Romance? Hell yeah. Comedy? Yeah, haha. Anything? Yeah, I guess. Like, I'm honestly very interested in seeing any genre because I'm always interested in seeing how the individual represents it rather than thinking of it on a very general basis. But I guess if I had to really say, if I really had to think of a genre, don't don't kill me for this, but I do want to see romance. Shocker. I, Shocker. Uh, that, <laughs> hell yeah. You know, I am, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with this. I'm okay with this. Yeah, I'm all right with that too. Because um, I feel like... Um, because I'm always interested in seeing the character development that comes with romance and seeing just what happens to the relationship itself. Does it become, do lovers stay lovers? Do lovers break up? Do lovers become friends? Where does it end? Uh, I just, I'm just always kind of a, not a fanatic, but I'm a fan of it. I like looking at it. Even if it is called shipping and even if people have some irks about it, I just feel like I want to see... I just want to see that slow burn, you know, and you know, be like, mmm, slow burn. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> that be like that, mmm. Yeah. Like marshmallow on an open campfire, <laughs> baby. Just got let it drip. So, uh... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. I was more of a wave your stick around to turn, you know, douse the flame, and then the marshmallow falls off the stick and hits your mother, and she freaks out because she's on fire. But that never happened. That's really <laughs> Remy and Swan. <laughs> Pretty except, much. Except Remy's like, oh, whoops, a marshmallow. And then he just grabs it, and then he throws it at Swan, like, here, catch, babe. <laughs> like, that's how chaotic they are. And I'm also into that. <laughs> <laughs> No, okay. It would be nice to see a lot, uh, see some more relationship stuff. Um, the half of my, the twenty five percent of my comics that isn't just people fighting is people having failed relationships, which is also okay. I, I mean, maybe this is just me. I'm not really big on just watching things be pure and work out. Like, I'm definitely more intrigued by the relationships and romances that are either unhealthy or weird or just completely don't work. No. And seeing people develop that character based off of that experience. Uh, out of curiosity, this is me, the co-host, asking questions based off the questions. So, <laughs> since... <laughs> that's right, I like that's the setup. <laughs> We're just going in. Um, so, based on the genres that you guys have answered with, is there any particular Void comic that represents, like, 
the genre that you're looking for, like what you're looking for in the genre you mentioned. Is there any void comic that you that you would point at and be like, yes, this is what I want to see more of? Is there one? That, is there a comic that you loved recently that was very funny for you, Boogity? Uh, everything I did. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> that that's that confidence. <laughs> I'm for it. You're 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 pretty much shaking the community with every comic you make. So hell yeah, love your comics, dude. Uh, cozy. Is there a comic you thought in mind? Yeah. I'm actually I'm actually curious because. While I completely commend um, confidence and going, really, I only like my own comics. Is there honestly like no like other genre or things that have really grabbed you? Like, what do you like want to see, Boogity? Well, I guess I guess the problem is that I, I don't really read the other comics that people. <gasps> <are doing. laughs> the only ones I read is like when I battle an opponent. I read that's the only other comic I read. The opponent's comic. Uh -huh. So what yeah, would I didn't think. What would incentivize you to read other people's comics? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think I should start reading because, yeah, I think you learn stuff from other people. So probably I, I, I probably should start reading other people's stuff more. Yeah, take your time. There's a lot to go off of, really. Because <laughs> usually I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm doing so many things. I have school and... I'm trying to read all these tutorials and improve and stuff, but yeah, I think I can make time and try and read the other stuff and see what works and doesn't. I definitely yeah. recommend uh, taking the time to look through the characters and reading some of the comics. See if you find some characters and some stories that you end up really liking and identifying with. Okay. And I I can't speak for Boogity, but like for me personally, I find just a wealth of inspiration reading the other people's like comics and going like, if I'm in the mood to collab or I want to expand on the, I loosely say void canon, I like seeing what other people are up to and saying like, oh, maybe I can expand on that or run with it or, you know, say someone's talking about aliens. I'm like, okay, I'm going to mention that in my battle and bring aliens to void or something like that. Yeah. I, I guess like the whole website's kind of collaborative and I just didn't realize that I like I feel like I'm trying to occur in a vacuum and I guess that doesn't work sometimes so I, I try and read other people's stuff yeah that's completely valid completely understandable all right and you cozy so, yes cozy um I like seeing hero I mean not to toot my own horns. I like seeing heroes who are obviously a trope, obviously are Im immutable, go through something very unsuperhero like I think that's totally compelling because you're so used to seeing heroes just be like, I'm a hero, I do hero things, I'm untouchable, and I'm kind of OP to like, oh, you know, we find that, to use a comic book term, we find that kryptonite mm -hmm. and we see how they deal with that. I, I think that's completely compelling. What about you, Pyrus? Um, I think Wendigo's ver Wendigo versus uh, Raygun was exactly the kind of comic I was looking for. Mm -hmm. For that, mm -hmm. uh, for that big, awesome shonen fighting, uh, creative battle choreography, all that good shit. That's good. You see, when I think of like, like, whenever I think of like um, void comics that are in the action genre that are particularly my favorite, um, you know. Back when Early Void was Early Void, I was still a toddler. But I just want to mention that I, like, sometimes I would just go through like um, Crazy Samurai. Oh, I believe yeah. that's a character. Yeah, I, I'd read through his shit and I'd be like, yo, man, if this guy was still on board, I'd want to fight him. Yeah, Crazy like, Samurai is good. Monday can do some really good stuff with action. <laughs> Truly. But yeah, Crazy Samurai, I'm after you. Um, to answer my own question, um, uh, oh boy, oh no, I don't have any comics that I can think of, whoops, <laughs> but this anonymous user says, what would be the worst way to be murdered? Oof. That's right, folks, what's the worst way to get killed? I'm assuming they're asking this in like a character context, right? Or are they asking us? What? I know, right? How do I want to die? 
Well, actually, you know, if you want to answer this with your character's context in mind, that would also make for some interesting answers. But, you know, let's get right into it. Okay. So that, Legit, I definitely want to know what would be the worst way for Egg Dealer to kill someone. Or to <laughs> be killed, I think is the, is the question. Oh, oh, that too. <laughs> to be killed, like... Oh, um, like all the eggs get sucked out of his egg muscles. Oh, oh no. dang. <laughs> that would be the worst for him, huh? I actually yeah. think that'd be the worst in general. Well, <laughs> take it to the bank, folks. That's it. <laughs> I know, right? Egg dealer wins. Why even bother answering? <laughs> okay. Uh, what about you, Cozy? Okay, since we're going on a theme here, I think in context to my character for those who don't know which happens to be remy look him up uh i would say if he was just in proximity to someone and you didn't know where he was he was just hiding and all of a sudden you got stab wounds and you, you got lacerations and you know know where they're coming from because you don't see an enemy i think that'd be the worst way to go mm. let's see mm. that would be scary down. okay what about, what about you, Pi-Pi? Okay, uh, well, what do you guys want to know? Do you want to know what's my worst way to get murdered or my character's worst ways to get murdered? The second one. <laughs> uh, hmm, okay. Uh, for Arena, it would be uh, feeling the the sensation of being gored again, which is... What, like by a bull? Like, uh like any kind of cutting or bleeding... Which is a sensation that she had felt uh, back in the day from a monster called Chiraptos that could make anyone bleed. Arena can't normally bleed. If you if you like uh, get a knife at her, you, it just uh, just uh, the sand that comes out, and she doesn't really feel that makes it. Sense. But uh, with the Chiraptos, she was actually able to actually bleed and feel that sensation of bleeding. And um, for a while, she was a traumatophobe because of that. <clears throat> so nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> so getting injured in a mortal way would be the worst way for her to get murdered would she flip out over a paper cut she would because she's not <laughs> supposed to be bleeding <laughs> she wouldn't like it it took a, it took a lot for her to to get to a point where where she could get over it long enough to save p2 from one comic hmm. so what about your other characters i think Oh, everybody. Oh, man. everybody? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look. We only have a set amount of time. We're going down okay, the line. Fine. Okay, uh, fine. Can I request a character? Yes, you guys can request a character. <laughs> um I want I wanna know about a car. I wanna know a lot of things about a car. But just this question for a car. Okay, worst way for a car to get murdered. Ugh, that's hard. He's been killed a lot of times already. <laughs> um maybe the uh, uh, I guess uh, the worst way would be the one that actually finally does it. Uh, oh, because he. I was, I was about to. Huh? I was about to be like, oh, so you gotta be vague like that. So he's just gonna stop right there. <laughs> I was about to get mad. No, no, no. I mean, um, he's he's been killed in so many ways uh, throughout hundreds of years already. So is he technically undead? Yes. Or... Yes, he's uh... a, he's technically a mummy. <clears throat> gotcha. <laughs> So he doesn't have a lot of fears when it comes to dying because he'll just come back. And it's, uh, I guess um, maybe one, one fear would be dying in a way that he can't protect Savannah. Or uh, because cause the thing is that Savannah doesn't have any undead mummy curse on her. She's a vampire. Once you find a way to kill her for good, she's dead for good. Yeah, um, usually if Savannah gets killed but she's not she's not perma killed and a car gets killed a car comes back and a car brings her back but in a situation where Savannah gets like absolutely dusted or something that would probably be the worst way for a car to go because then he'd come back and he'd have no reason to be alive anymore mm. oh so sad I'm writing this down <laughs> See. Oh, see, see, now you're giving like hints. Like, Astro's gonna be like, I'm gonna fight you and I'm gonna win. That's why I made this QA section. Oh, I see. <laughs> My win. <laughs> but, um. Do you have a request, answer. Cozy? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry? Did you have a character request? 
Let me think. Because, I mean, you've got, like, 15 billion characters out of all of us. And counting. I know. We could, like, fill this entire VCast with, what would you do with the hundredth character? <laughs> this is my old person voice, because it's been 84 years. <laughs> um, let me think. Gee, let me see about picking a character that's compelling to your fan base. What about Miller? A uh, worst way for Miller to go <laughs> would be if uh, it wouldn't actually be death. There's actually something that these way that him and most veterans are way more scared of, and it's uh, going insane. Oh, oh yeah. Or so uh, or also being uh, mind controlled. Mm. Oh. It's something that that uh, turns their stomach to even think about. Mm, that's kind of tantalizing. Okay, I'm into it. I'm so they can dish it, but they can't take it. Pretty much. There's yeah. actually a comic where it happens. <laughs> you can see Miller throw up over it. Mm. So he's a coward. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Iris is like, listen, you just wanted to hear what was the worst. I didn't come here to get rest. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I ever fight Miller, which is impossible, I'm ready. I mean, <laughs> Miller has October is just around the corner. Miller has shown cowardice in the comics in yeah, different but he's ways. Dead. But yeah, he's dead yeah. right now, so I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Kick the corpse and be like, "Okay, this is the part where you throw up, dude." <laughs> <laughs> Best battle ever. Okay. Um, to answer the question, um, what's the worst way to die? To be murdered? Let's see. For any of my characters, I don't know. Stepping on a Lego, dubbing your toe. It's a lot to go off of. That would kill them. <laughs> Boy, you'd kill me. Who, who would that kill? <laughs> Dead. Probably Niles. He's the only one who's like normal. He'll be like, oh, my toe. And then he just dies. But um, <laughs> I think, let's, let's, I guess the easiest answer would be, I guess, if you just don't give Monty an umbrella and it's sunlight. I guess the worst part will just be that he boils alive. Yeah. So probably the most painful because if anyone else got boiled alive, I'm sure they'd be fine. Like Ash is fine. You y'all saw her. Her face got burned off. She's okay. So I'm imagining not... something like. Have you ever seen a movie Gremlins? No, but oh, I am. God, a how old are we? <laughs> <laughs> the moment you said it, I had to mute and laugh because. I'm like, if you aren't referencing something from 2018, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm two uh, years old. In the in the movie Gremlins, the Gremlins boil alive in sunlight, so that's why I was asking. <laughs> oh, so you're calling Monty a Gremlin? <laughs> and here I thought we had something. Okay. <laughs> I see. Thank you. Well, um, I love Gremlins. <laughs> yeah, when you watch the film, you'll go, oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, but. Uh, that should be like the last question. Yes, because we've gone on long enough. That sounds good. These yeah. these questions so take longer the than Astro. expected. Yes, it's it's the end of Q and A, you guys. Remember? Thank you, guys. Uh, please bring us more cues for us to A. Yes, <laughs> I, I really uh, don't like it when you guys say it like that. I don't like. It. <laughs> I'm gonna put so many A's up in that queue. I don't like. It. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, bring us but, more questions and we'll answer more in the next episode, possibly, if we don't have another topic to talk about. Uh, and now we're going to go into comic reviews. Uh, the first one we're going to do, right, is the Tag Team Magical Girl round two. Uh, for this match, unfortunately, uh, Kent and Tensho were not able to submit a comic. So we'll only be uh, looking at the side from uh, Vertizen and Corn of the Breads, which is with the two characters... Uh, Wish tinged idol logic and passion something buddy. passion fruit. Hollow passion. Do you say passion fruit? <laughs> <laughs> Hollow passion and wish tinged idol logic. <laughs> they knew exactly what they her... were doing when they made these. <laughs> I totally just want to call her passion fruit for the rest of this review. <laughs> All right, so here comes the recap for that comic. Logic idly observes a battle waged against Passion by magical girls Faustina and Flechette during their magical Magus War. Despite the taunts made by Prod due to her lack of involvement in the action itself, 
even the lack thereof serves a purpose. And Logic's ob observation proves that Passion is only half the monster she can truly be in the battlefield without the aid of Logic's quote unquote touch. So, Verdant Corn, uh, this was a pretty short and sweet battle, I'd say. I really do feel like the writing could use a little extra oomph at this point. Or at least I'm hoping to see a lot more going on by the finale. Because as much as I love the interaction that's going on between Logic and the mascot prod, um, can't say that it was enough for me to really en enjoy the sequence that's going on. Uh, and I don't really necessarily grow any more attachment to these characters either. But, you know, you're in the second round and you'll be making it onto the third. So I'm hoping to see a lot more from you two. And, you know, best of luck. And in terms of visuals, I do want to say that those last two action shots, just, there's just, I feel like the entire last page itself didn't really do it for me because the anatomy was just not too solid. It was kind of. I kind of got some mixed feelings from it. It wasn't giving me the oomph that I needed. I know that because you guys are on such a short deadline and you guys have a life that this can cause the quality to drop, but I really do wish that there was a little bit more love being given to the intensity of these scenes instead of just these kind of blank backgrounds with this kind of, with this line art that's kind of staticky and could use a little bit more oomph, a little bit more stretch to it. But I, it doesn't deny the fact that I am still interested in seeing what these duo continue to do in the future. And you two are clearly making a good team with um, what's going on in here. And I'm hoping that you two have plans for the final round and something's going to happen so I can really just get into this duo more. But in the end, I have um, really high hopes for you two. You know, congrats on making what's more so full comic. And looking forward to it. I definitely left, I think, like a wall of text of critique on this battle. But first and foremost, I was really surprised with the level of action here. And I think I mentioned that, that they got some really cool dynamic angles page to page, which uh, it kind of bums me out that Astro, it didn't really, I get it. Like the deadline was tight and things needed to be compromised just for the sake of time. But I think well, with the time that was allotted, you guys did a really great job. I love just all the dynamic angles and the fact that this wasn't just a side scrolly, you know, profile view comic panel to panel. You got some really great action shots and some grisly fighting here. It was kind of neat. I think my critique was definitely the development of the characters uh, be between logic and passion. I assume that their names lend themselves to giving us sort of a glimpse as to who they are and it's sort of evidenced in the dialogue here but i think what makes them a great team is that while logic is sort of dry and for lack of a better term kind of dull it's evened out by passion and her character and being you know super dynamic which i think kind of suffered because she didn't say anything in this entire battle which makes reading logic's logical assessment at least for me, kind of dull. Um, cornbread, Verdison. I had a good feeling uh, w from looking at the character sheets off the bat that these two would uh, would make some great action sequences. And that part holds true. Really what's holding back your action in this comic is uh, was the not being able to really polish everything up. But the spirit of having some good stuff is there. Uh, I agree that what is the weakness to this comic is that we're not getting a lot out of these two characters aside from cool action and cool designs. Um, and that will only get you so far when you when you end up in a situation where you're facing a really, uh, really good artist, really good opponents, or... Um, not not to insult Ken Intentional, just that they didn't submit a comic this time. So I think, and, and and when it comes to death tournaments, what we usually see with these death tournament characters is that they tend to be rarely utilized, if ever, after the tournament is done. 
and we've seen so little of uh, of passion and wish tinged ideologics um, uh, chemistry aside from their chemistry in combat that uh, we're nearing the finale of the tournament and and uh, people on the side are feeling like they want to they want to see some more out of them outside from fighting at this point uh, because they're afraid that we won't see these characters anymore after this tournament's over. Um, that's usually why some folks who go through these tournaments, they tend to put what they can of the base information in the first round, then start uh, developing into something deeper and set in for in the later round, something more plot oriented. And we haven't gotten to a piece of that yet, but you do have another chance in the next round uh, to give us something, uh, something uh, more uh, so with more substance. We're going to move on to the next round. Congratulations, uh, Cornbread and Vertizen. And the next round is with Scout and Boris versus Catherine and Elizabeth. And here's the recap for Scout and Boris' side. After their recent murder act, Catherine and Elizabeth hide in a dumpster to discuss further plans to avoid criminalization. Scout and Boris become their targets of punishment, ironically after those two performed an act of murder as well. The Jim Duo are attacked by Catherine and Elizabeth as they converse uh, Boris's motives and Scout's reasoning. Scout's grudge resurfacing as they fight once more. Soon after murdering another famous duo, Scout and Boris end the fight with a better bond, and their exercise continues. So, Scout and Boris are very quickly becoming like my favorite duo of this entire tournament. I love the chemistry. I love the contrast that's going on between these two. Like the just the beginning general premise that you two introduced, where it's like you have this ex magical girl, and then you have this wannabe magical girl working together. Of course, there's gonna be the clashes, and they've already happened in that first round, and it's being con and it's being segued and continued into the second round, and their bond kind of strengthens even after they kill another famous duo. And and rather than having another like argument about this, they become closer, which I really do like. I like this character development. Um, in terms of critique, I guess I don't really have much to say because it's pretty satisfactory to me. There's good. There's some nice shots. It's fully colored. The interaction I really do enjoy. I guess for this situation, I actually don't have anything really critical to say i just want to say that i do i did enjoy this comic and looking forward to these two and their interactions more Alrighty, uh bloombeard and gregory you guys are a fantastic example of not only character development but just really great art and writing i think you guys make a fantastic duo and i hope you continue becoming a duo well after this tournament because i think the strengths that you bring are really evident in each round and I don't know, for me, you were definitely the standout in uh, round two, at least personally. I think that's really evidenced by the writing. I love the writing paired with this type of art. Gregory, I think that you are doing some really fantastic things. Like the first thing that I noticed was that cool transition where you have the previous opponent uh, mentioned visually here and sort of narratively going from round one to round two is a consistent thing. I think that's so cool. And I just really like seeing your opponents in the tra literal trash looking at the hole in the brick wall and then the next panel consists of them looking at the defeated opponent. That's just, I don't know. I totally cracked up when I saw that from page one and I knew this was going to be a great thing. I don't know what references you're going off of or what you're utilizing to construct these pages, but it almost feels kind of greatly cinematic. And uh, specifically, I'm looking at page two, where we have Scout and Boris doing their pseudo training as they talk to one another. And the glitter on like the ocean or bay behind them, I think is a really great touch. It's like, that's something that I don't see in comics. That's something that I think I recently saw in a film, like a real film, which really like threw me for a loop. I was like, this is such a simple technique, but it's really cool. For me, I know over the story and the narrative was really great. And that is a total credit to the writer that you have uh, teamed up with. 
but my focus was definitely all the details that you put in the tilt of your panel and just the action that you incorporated just how scout is just totally cool and just blase with their uh 10,000 pound punch very one punch man i dug it i don't know this was a delightful read from beginning to end and i thumbs up see ya uh bloombeard greg lee uh knocked it out of the park again i love this comic uh i like the punchline at the end and i really just want to see more from you guys it's really entertaining the way you two work together that's really all i have to say i don't have much to say about this comic i really liked it everything works for me when it's good, it's good. Yeah. Big fan. Big fan. Cool. I stand. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna. We're gonna move on to the next. Uh, to the next side of this, uh, Catherine Elizabeth side, and here My comes turn. the recap. I'm doing the recap. Uh, yeah, My go ahead. Turn. I'm just saying. Here it comes. Yeah, you better keep that part in. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> okay. Hiding out after their previous act of murder, Catherine and Elizabeth make claiming Scout and Boris's gym their next mission in order to establish their church and spread the good word, eventually. Though the building is not as abandoned as they expect, a fight immediately begins as Boris performs an iron swan on Catherine. The battle, however, immediately becomes one-sided, as the premise of death during this battle excites not only Elizabeth, but her hurricane of locusts which consumes the gym duel whole. But not before Boris can tell the nerds, fuck the cycle. So you two are newcomers and man, you two are really bringing the game here. You know, I, this is a good comic. Like you guys have full color, full shading and there's a beginning and there's an end. You guys are really doing the work and I have very high compliments. I'm very proud of you two for doing what you can, especially within like the deadline, especially considering that all of this is kind of like new to you guys and such a very, very, very new learning experience, especially since you two hopped into a attorney like this. Just big props to turning in what you could. In terms of action, um, I would suggest practicing dynamic shots a lot more because you guys, you two definitely have the potential and it is there. I can feel it, but I'm not seeing it too much, especially in page seven where Catherine, I believe, she is throwing Gal over the shoulder and after snipping the leg. In the action that's going on here, I feel like Gout's body is kind of like not doing the action of being thrown justice, being flung. Because once your once your leg is gone, you're kind of focusing on the fact that your leg is gone. You're kind of like, oh shit. Not kind of whimpering this like very weak fuck Boris and then getting tossed aside in a way. And also Scout's back shouldn't be bending inwards it should be bending the opposite way around because even though she is folding in on that third panel i really do believe that considering her um injury and how suddenly weak she is she should be kind of a little more floppy in that sense and in the continuation on the subject of improving action um I really do feel like a little bit more oomph could be given to page 11 because this is clearly supposed to be the strongest page where you get this swarm of locusts but when I look at this swarm of locusts especially in this first panel I didn't even recognize that they were going into the gym I actually thought that they were coming out of that building and into the gym like the like they are coming to the viewer that is why the flock of locusts is getting bigger at the top but no they're actually going inside this building that i didn't really recognize as at first and we get elizabeth here saying it's so beautiful i really feel like she should have had her own her own kind of shot at the bomb perhaps a more 
horizontally like horizontally like a wider shot of her full body ex- expressing her glee and nearly dying and nearly being a part of this cycle i want to see her joy at her fullest i want to see how her body is is reacting i just i don't want to see just her face so i guess as a general statement i would say just do more dy- dynamic shots and you know zoom out a bit but otherwise than that I really do. I really do like this chemistry that's going on between this duo, where you have someone who's eccentric, and you have another character who's like, "I have this under control because I'm not as weird as this other one." But then she gets hit, and she's like, "You know what? Fuck it. You know what? We're gonna fight. Let's just do it." I really do. <laughs> like, I just like the writing that you two have going on here. And honestly, like after this tournament, I would actually really love to see you two, besides some of the characters, and you know, joining on the fun that's involved. I want to see you guys collaborate more because you two very obviously collaborate well and work well with each other and understand the chemistry and what you two can do together. So, you know, get into Void so I can fight y'all, but also collaborate more so I can see more of y'all developing developing together as a team of two wonderful comic artists. And that's from me. (laughs) Alrighty. I think I'm really glad that you mentioned that Astro that they're new, this is their first tournament, and this is an impressively cool showing. I, I think a lot of us, especially us veterans, tend to forget that it's kind of intimidating to come into a, an established and huge community and be like, all right, I'm going to throw out comics and have it be judged by a whole bunch of people. And oh, guess what? It's also going to be on a VCAT. It's got to be like a lot of pressure, but like. You guys did a great job, and I really hope you stay on after the tournament. Win or lose, doesn't matter. I think you guys, as a duo, have some great chops, and I'd love to see things individually. But nothing stopping you from continuing on in your duo ship. I don't want to reiterate things that Astro mentioned, because I think they touched on a lot of things that I wanted to. Especially uh, Elizabeth's actions. You have that hint of manipulating the mask and showing like the glee or the anger and what have you but I, as someone who loves cartoony things and this character has sort of a cartoony eccentric hint, i think that you could really push that you could just really go wild with it maybe even open the plague doctor beak a bit in like a grin or something i don't know i'm not sure what limits you have to what's going on on the face i think it's interesting that your opponents completely characterize these characters in reverse like in Gregory and Bluebeard's comic, it's, uh, I believe, Catherine, who is the bombastic character, and Elizabeth, who's a bit of the straight man. Whereas here, it's the reverse, and I like it a whole lot better. Like, seeing uh, Elizabeth be kind of the crazy and the religious zealot is hilarious. I especially love them <laughs> kicking open the door and going, bam, hello, church. I laughed out loud. It was great. I think there are just a couple technical things that I would love to see you on if you make it to the next round, especially your sound effects. I know those are super hard to implement, and I don't know if you're doing it after the fact or before, but most notably on page four, the first panel where uh, Boris is doing the the Iron Swan, and you have that whoosh, it doesn't have the same uh, quality and rendering as art and the rest of the panels. And also on that last panel, the crack where the dumbbell connects, it feels like you're trying to pack it in to the corner and not have it cover any of the action. But don't feel afraid to overlay your sound effects over things like like the figure or the impact sort of, what is it, majesty that you have around the dumbbell. Uh, it's that layering that makes for a dynamic panel. It's not a, It's not a bad thing to do, at least in my opinion. Hey, Sunrise and Flighty, you guys did a great job with this comic. Um, You guys have a really good handle on the concept of making comics. You have good storytelling. uh, You have good storytelling instincts. Uh, You write characters in an interesting manner. um, And you have the right idea when it comes to the action and when it comes to how much you're putting into your comics. Really what you're lacking is uh, some of the technical knowledge. Um, some more, pra- you, you guys need a little more practice with your figure drawing. 
which will in turn help make your action scenes uh, deliver a lot better. And uh, a few uh, things here and there when it comes to um, understanding layout and understanding how to read a comic. I'm going to go back to page 7 for a different reason. Uh, as far as how it's being read, uh, you have uh, the character being flipped on the, on the final panel uh, to the left with the uh, character flipping them to the on the right. Uh, this panel and this scene in general would probably read a little better if you were to actually flip this across, flip this aside, so that we would, the eye, uh, for most of us who are read left to right, uh, being Western readers, we would see um, the girls uh, flipping her, saying, I'm so tired of people doing that first, and then we, our eyes follow uh, Scout as they're flying across the room. And uh, little tricks like that will make uh, t things to to notice will make uh, the comics easier to read and make it more engaging to read, more interesting for the eye to follow, and will help your action scenes as well as improving on your uh, figure drawing and dynamic action poses. I really hope you guys stick around after this tournament's done. I uh, guarantee that if you guys stay with us and you listen to uh, listen to the critiques that folks give you. Uh, you'll be much better uh, in within just a year's time, if that. Uh, the page that you were indicating, what was it, seven? Yes. I personally, I both agree and disagree with the tossing them backwards, because I do feel that as a Western reader, we read progression from left to right. So throwing them, throwing, what is it? Not for scout uh, over their head to the left kind of feels like a, a skip in the action like we're going like somebody hit the rewind mm -hmm. on the vcr if you, anybody knows what a vcr is uh, um but like i think this would have been better served by a different angle this the side scrolly action kind of makes the action look dull i agree um if if they like made it like a a world's eye view or maybe an above head shot where uh scout is filling panel because they're being flung skyward mm -hmm. I think would have been more interesting but this just feels so oh I, I got tossed and doesn't have the it, stakes it, it that feels, I think you guys were trying to put in right it feels flat mm -hmm. the, um, shots actually on the subject of that I would have loved it if these shots were like um from the top to the bottom just like we're, we're watching like we're seeing I would have loved to uh, imagine like when I was thinking about like how would I actually want to like change these shots I would have loved to see Scout trying to drag herself away mm -hmm. so, yeah Scout in the forefront we see her face and we see her fingers and how close they are to the camera because she's trying to escape yeah and so that we know how scared she is that would have been cool and then Catherine's all the way in the back and then we just follow Scout's face that goes from like horror to even like more horror as she's suddenly lifted and long all the way yeah there's um uh, getting the camera out of that two-dimensional angle will definitely help your comics in the long run at least in, in these action situations there's always you know there's always going to be a situation where a two a 2d flat situation might work out maybe for comedic effect but here it would have been better served if uh you loosen the camera up a bit uh good stuff, yeah good stuff regardless Congratulations to all four Hi. of you for this round. Yay. Very entertaining. Great comics. Hell yeah. And uh, with that, we are exiting the Magical Girl tournament and moving on to a few Beyond Battles. Yay. Next up is... Oh, they're all Beyond Battles. I just realized yeah, that. You're right. They're just Beyond Battles. Huh. Uh, next up is Anvil in Why Are We Dropping, Boys? <laughs> oh my gosh. Here comes the recap. It is revealed that months before the election that the inspiration behind such a leap to blood sport was Fortnite, which angers Anvil to the point of fleeing herself out of a second story window. After the smiles confirms the session to the position of mayor, during an interview he concludes it by doing the floss, which captivates and excites the younger audience, but the same can't be said for the others watching. Oh man, can I just say, no matter how many times I read that title, I actually don't know how I'm supposed to read it. I would, 
I would read it and I'd be like, why are we dropping, boys? Why are we dropping <laughs> boys? Why are we dropping boys? <laughs> Where's the inflection? I think there's so many iterations and in the end, turns out I just have a monkey brain. <laughs> but anyways, okay. Um, So, hi, Reeser, Crow Eva, Crow Crow. Um, so, uh, I've been getting the sneaks and the peaks of this comic, so I don't have anything much to say besides uh, this is a pretty funny comic. And I think my favorite part, besides the Fortnite and the flossing, because those are pretty solid. I think it's yeah. the entire sequence of Anvil will be like, you know what? I'm going to fling myself out of a second story window. And you're not going to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> and then just like s- seeing her be like, arg, while she falls out the window. I just can't help but like think that she's saying this with the most dead, pan robotic, glitchy voice. And I'm just like, this is actually my favorite. My favorite Anvil comic ever. My favorite Crow comic ever. Mm-hmm. Not to mention... The very last panel, like, besides the part of um, Jasper, you know, love Jasper, love and Vin, I want to see them back. Just being, just seeing Jasper react like, hey, yo, we, yo, we got, we got go, man. We got back. <laughs> um, besides the part that, like, that is also my favorite. I just want to say that I really actually do like this panel because I actually like the color scheme that's going on here. And I, and I like the look of the sky and I like the building here. And I would actually love if you kind of did this more. You did more of these, this different lighting with this different shading that's going on in this very last panel. Because besides the fact that it's a very nice clip and feature of your other characters and where they're at, I just think that visually this is actually my favorite panel. And I'd like, and I'd like to see more of this style in the future. But that's all I have. Hoping to see more of Anvil. Hell yeah, buddy. Fortnite for life. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a kid. I love Lip Loss. <laughs> <laughs> but that's me. Okay. I mean, I just want to start off and say, Crow, when you first came to board, I was there, man. I saw the first comic. I saw the first battle. And I was all like, I put in my critiques and stuff, but like, you have come so freaking far. Like, from page one to four, this is hands down, I think, one of your better comics, if not one of the best. I don't know how much setup or time you put into it outside of the deadline, but for what it is, I think it's really good. Like, your establishing shot is so awesome. And I know for a lot of people, they kind of eye roll and go having to put in establishing shots because nobody really likes backgrounds, but you really put some TLC into this. And I just think it's really rad. Like, the town hall, you even put... a uh, Jaime the fish boy at the very top which shows your not only that you've done your homework but that you have been reading previous comics and you are really invested in the void canon and you want to incorporate your own influence in some way which I'm like oh dude I freaking love this you reference not only the election but for, <laughs> I, you made Fortnite canon I guess <laughs> I don't know I think my critiques at this point are just nitpicky. I I find it super surprising that you've given Anvil so much characterization and for a static robotic face, you really have some dynamic uh, moments in there from the first page to them running and throwing themselves out the window. I, I find it surprising that the characters, sort of like her entourage with her in the office, the bird and the person, they have malleable flesh and just you know living faces but i don't think that they express themselves as much as you were able to do with a face which i find kind of ironic if you can push your expressions because i think you have it on page one like let me see the what is he the redhead by the one two three fourth panel putting his hands together is kind of static and i i know what you're trying to go for you're trying to go for that like i I don't know, like that deep inhale moment before they go bruh <laughs> and explain. I think that would that would have really sold better if you push that expression. But as it is now, it just falls kind of flat. If anything, I'm more interested in just seeing Anvil. But maybe that was your intention. Who knows? I like the page setup you have with uh, the sort of uh, 
what you call those, the margins, sidebars, where you have some, like a splash of color, the city, and a little hint of, how do you pronounce it? Do you? Deuce? Uh, dis? The, the, there you go, the big robot. Dis. But I feel that maybe this is just based off of how I first read this battle. I was at work and I was like, oh, I gotta read this, and I read it on my phone. I find it to be a bit too wide. Maybe if you skinnied up the margins, it'd be better. Maybe that's just me. Just all in all, I think this is just a hilarious peek into the inner workings of Void. You've contributed something really compelling to the canon. And I think a lot of people are going to be referencing this going forward with what they contribute if they want to get involved with what people are making. Uh, Kroiba. Congratulations. I think visually this is your best comic so far. And uh, as it's been said, the amount of uh, attention that you're putting into the backgrounds is definitely um, definitely uh, uh, appreciated by everyone who's reading this. And you're getting a really good score for it too, I would imagine. Uh, but I want to repeat again... Um, how, how great it is that you've got these backgrounds that are also very easy to navigate through. Uh, this uh, book air, this uh, little library area where they're talking inside the uh, government building, um, uh, it's easy for me to tell where everybody is. Very easy. Uh, despite being a little more, a little bit of a complicated uh, room with this uh, circular opening in the middle and all these layers of books uh all these shelves uh scattered about uh great job uh taking a, a t time and details for that material uh the character art is where you need a little more work as what cozy was saying you can go t to page four to see the kids reactions between the two panels and yeah they're excited but mm, yeah. you're not really pushing the excitement as much as you really could be with these expressions. Um, a, a lot of your human faces don't move, don't stretch as much as you can get them to stretch. And you should really take advantage of the medium to try and um, widen those eyes a bit more, widen that mouth a bit more when, thing, when something's uh, exciting or horrific. Go a little extra with uh with your emotions i i have never touched fortnite i don't get some of the references going on here oh you're gonna touch it now no i'm not <laughs> get with the times grandpa but uh i still found this comic very funny and uh that's a good that's a testament of your comedic writing which i've uh praised already uh more than once before uh keep on Keep on delivering. I just want to say, I'm. I don't. Don't play games with my heart, bro. If Invin and Jasper are coming back, I I need to know. You need to make a statement because oh, yeah, real. I'm really excited by that last panel. <laughs> I think everyone here wants to fight Invin and Jasper if we haven't already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or go on a date with them. <laughs> <laughs> that comic was so good. Uh, congratulations again, Kroiba. Moving on to oh, the next yeah. comic, we've okay. got uh, what was it, Gossamer Swan. Yes, and the title for this one is Recovery, and I'll be reading the summary. So, Swan has run from her friends and her family, and recent traumas have left her to face the consequences of those actions, but not alone. One by one, she reunites once again with her parents, with Arena and Karen Clapp, and throughout all this, she is face to face with the flashbacks of torture which Remy Nufra has wrought upon her. Moving into Wolf Headquarters, Swan reveals that she is taking the initiative and taking a fresh start, deciding to restart her life as a superhero, catch up with old friends, and make amends with them as well. I have to say, my god, was this a, a absolutely beautiful comic to read. Mm -hmm. Like, I, like I, I could gush. And you know what? I will because <laughs> <I'm gonna. laughs> I cannot say strongly enough that this is perhaps just not only my favorite comic for Swan, but the greatest hook for Swan. Like if anyone was just 
just reading her comics idly and being like, yeah, this is pretty good. <laughs> this is the comic that I believe is is something that would draw readers in. If I wasn't oh. already interested in Swan as much as I was right now, this is what really would just give me the hook and just sink me in. This this comic really solidifies everything that I feel like you, JC, want to dive into with her characterization, with her troubles of being a superhero. Now she wants to start anew with her troubles with her friends and her romantic life where she has trouble focusing on one or the other, being a superhero or being herself. She is now faced with these consequences, with faced with the humanity that she has to face, that she cannot keep cutting others off like this. And she really needs to get together with her friends once more, really acknowledge them, really get to know them, and also reflect on her past mistakes and also understand that there are some things that she really needs to fix, that being a superhero cannot just wrap and seal and that she cannot ignore. This comic was really strong in writing. This comic was really strong in in visuals and expressions and seeing the horror that Swan is facing. I will not deny the fact that there were some pages where when she wakes up screaming, I can feel the intensity. I can feel even myself a little bit short of breath, a little bit more worried for what's going to happen to Swan, if she will be okay. This comic was a powerful favorite. And I just have, like, gushing aside, like, I, I admittedly, I'm a sucker. I don't have any critiques for this because I absolutely do love it. And I absolutely love the development that you took with her as an artist and as a writer. This is great. And because I have no critiques, in the end, I want to say with a definite positive note that I am looking forward to what you will be doing with Swan in the future. And you are leaving me at the edge of my seat of what kind of person and what kind of superhero she will turn into by the next, by even just the next comic. And that's for me. I may have to echo what Astro just said. Like, I want to have, like, critiques. I want to nitpick this, but I think this is hands down the strongest comic you have done. Like, this has solidified just Swan, I believe, is a void household name. If people want to know who your character is, I think this character arc is the thing to look at because it is so compelling. It grabs you by the shirt collar and goes like, look at me, here I am. It's just, it's really, really cool. I know that we spoke a bit about uh, the narrative and stuff, and like you just took it and went running. I know that just a bit of spoilers. Uh, JC asked, like, what do you think they got up to while she was there for a month? And I, I offered some suggestions, but what you did with those pages of flashback are haunting. Like, you did such a great job showing just enough, but not too much that it left the reader sort of imagining, oh my gosh, what happened after that? What happened before that? Oh my gosh, this is awful. You use this BB to j just really ar arrest us and have us kind of on the edge of our seats, really nervous for Swan, feeling bad for her, and completely heartbroken at some times. I think the best buildup of just... I wouldn't call it a tantrum, but I think it's just a frustration and grief over the entire situation is evidence with her going through those flashbacks while she's in the shower and trying to scrub off those scars or those magical scars that were given to her. And it all culminating into her exploding the shower stall with her wind power and just crumbling into this vulnerable pile. It, I really think that was a powerful page. I, I could not stop reading it, and I don't really think you needed any dialogue in that moment. Just the panel actions and what you drew and everything building up to that was really, really strong. I can't stop talking about this comic, and I need to stop now because I'm just going to go on for like a mile. <laughs> uh, Daycat, this is without a doubt the best comic you've made so far on the site and an absolute uh, level up. Yay! <laughs> uh, 
Um, it's uh, visually the best you've done so far. You've uh, s you've uh, pushed your emotions with your uh, with your characters' faces uh, the farthest that you have, uh, the farthest that they've gone so far, and uh, the writing especially is so sharp and uh, on the point from first page to the end in this one. And writing was always one of the uh, weaker parts of your comics, even as you continue to uh, grow tremendously on the visual department. So the whatever you did as far as how you took the script for this comic, how you took uh, writing, the pacing, uh, the panel movements, uh, the layout, all the strategies that you took for this comic are the strategies you need to take going forward. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the, and if you do that, you're definitely going to turn out uh, new comics that will be just as good as this one, if not better. There's uh, little things that can be nitpick here and there. Uh, as far as uh, face structure, uh, skull anatomy, little things, not enough to to uh, dis to discount any of the um, uh, any of the emotion and power of the comic uh, overall. Uh, congratulations, uh, a thousand times over. Definitely, definitely. I just want to tack on real quick because, at least for me, Swan has always been a character on Void that's just always been there for me and i admittedly sort of relegated her to oh she's a superhero and she does superhero things and she's always good and she's perfect nothing bad ever happens to her i think this is the first time i've seen her not only as something more that, than a superhero but as a cated character who's not perfect who's made mistakes and who feels guilty about those things and that is that has me like glued to the screen going i need to know more I need to know more about this character who feels real. It's like too often we get superheroes or characters fall into a trope and they're perfect and is boring. But like she's done things that she originally thought right, but upon reflection we're like, well that wasn't so right. And that's that's cool because it's so rare to see not only humility in a character that's purported to be perfect, but a character who wants to do something about it. And who knows if she'll even do the right or wrong thing. I think the biggest takeaways here are evidenced in what she did with uh, Diego. And for those who don't know or haven't read the backlog of uh, JC's comics, uh, Swan was with and, you know, dated a guy that she thought that she loved. And I think he proposed to her or they were engaged. But then when she was out hearing, she found him committing crime and she turned him in. And now, like, after this whole ex encounter with Remy, it's like she's starting to think, was that the right thing to do? What, was that something I should have done? And I just like, I'm here for that. I'm here for that kind of narrative. <laughs> that and like also contextual, her silent, awkward encounter with the with Arena, which if anybody else totally obsessively reading the backlog the way I am uh, they had a falling out they were supposedly friends but she was like you're too crazy you're too off the handle arena and I'm totally done with your temper and she kind of left it at that and the f aside from her parents the first person that comes to visit her is arena and she's like well I guess we should talk and I, I want to know what they said I want to know what the exchange was and I hope that you continue on with showing us more of this narrative because it is so compelling. I, Astrodial, also have things to say about this topic. That's right. I ain't done yet. Um, <laughs> I just want to say, um, I don't know um, uh, if it's like the same for some people, but I'm a very like, when I see something, uh, my brain always likes to hear it just as much. So I'm, so it's very easy for me when I'm hook, line, and sinkered into a comic. I can really imagine everything that's going on. I can hear, I can really hear what's going on, and it, so I can draw myself forward into it. So, reading this comic, reading this first page, I could 
literally hear her desperation. I can hear her running footsteps as it's echoing into this like black darkness, into this void. And I can hear her desperation. I can hear everyone fading out. I can hear her crying. I can hear a lot of things because I'm just so into this comic. This is such a good comic. Oh my God, I'm gonna. <laughs> 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 and also, I don't know if this was kind of like intended or not, but like you, you have these little things in these comics that's going on that like, besides the fact that she has this scar, that's always going to remind us, the viewers, and also her, of the fact that she interacted with this horrible person and was stuck with this horrible person for a month and is essentially cursed to live in that moment until she is able to alleviate herself of that trauma. There are these little things besides that scar that show that it's that that even kind of remained with her. And I don't know if you intended this or not, but it really resounded strongly with me. Um, we get a shot of when she first wakes up in horror and she's turning on the light. You can see that the dress is in the trash can. And I didn't notice this until I reread it. And I was like, that's really cool. Oh, I didn't notice that. I know. I was looking at that. I was like, is this intended? Is that actually there? Or is that like a reflection of her trying to throw away what happened, et cetera, et cetera. I was, I was just like, holy shit, that's really cool. <laughs> and the final part where um, we get um, her scene where she is stabbing this pro. She has this very specific hairstyle. Wait, not no, it wasn't the crow stabbing scene. I believe it was actually, it was a, I believe it was in the first scene of the comic itself where she had this very specific hairstyle where half of her, where a side of her head is in the cornrows, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah, so I found it, the fact that she still has this um, hairstyle in the in the final page, where she's trying to move on, I just found it very interesting that she has the hairstyle. Because yeah. personally, I would like if I was in that situation, even just the idea of having that hairstyle would just fuck me up in itself. I wouldn't want to keep that. I wouldn't even want to think about that. But seeing her have that during this moment where she's like yes i'm gonna try and move on with my life just that hairstyle in itself it's just really resounded to me that for now even in the most simplest of ways be it hairstyle be it something that's in the trash can such as that previous dress just the very little things show that this event was truly traumatizing and it's gonna it's stick going with to, her yeah it's gonna stick with her and even the most littlest of manners and i do find that not only realistic but relatable so yeah oh so good so, so good so good. <laughs> also this is just because i know it and i'm not sure if it's evident but it, it, because it for, personally for me it creeps me out when we go to both flashbacks i don't think i'm not sure if anybody noticed but the things that she's doing like when remy asks her name she initially refuses but he asks again and it's like almost like she can't help but say it like why would she voluntarily give her name but like you see her trying to bite her lip trying to resist and like the scars sort of light up and she can't help but give it to him and then she he proceeds to ask like what are the name of your parents where do you live and I get the feeling that she gave all that up, that she was so weak and that whatever magic went down, he knows everything about her now, which really gives the reason as to why she closed down the studio and she's looking for a new place to live. Oh, yeah. But I'm just like, oh, dang. JC, where are you at? <laughs> We're talking about you. <laughs> it's like, come on the cast, give us all the secrets. Good comic. So good raving reviews absolutely thumbs up yeah congratulations once again and we have to move on because we'll just keep talking about it forever <laughs> hey you know what it's it's super rare when you come across something where you're like you know what i got nothing this is good moving on now to the final comic of the night this is a uh, lawson in back in action Lawson is a character from quite a while back i think the last invitational tournament uh, the artists uh, didn't stay for long, but they've come back and they're going to try their hand again at the whole void thing. 
which is always exciting. So here's the recap for their return. A young woman runs into an alley as she is chased by a thug. But fortunately, Lawson has come to save the day, giving only two offers, a fight or be turned into the VCPD. His confidence in a 10 second battle drops to 45 as it's discovered that he was the one pulled into a trap all along, soon thrown into a wall by the duo. Though it's revealed that they underestimated him regardless, the powers that Lawson received in his travels come in handy. Defeated and left to be taken in by the VCPD, Lawson zooms off, primed and ready for whatever Void City throws at him. Hey, welcome back. Haven't seen you before, but you know, what's poppin', dude? Uh, it's good to see you back in action. I mean, that's... Man, that's... A, <laughs> man, hold on. Okay. Wah, wah. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go home, you guys. I don't think... <laughs> but, um... It's nice to see you back on Void. <laughs> and... You know, this seems like a very promising character. It's always nice to see one of these more, like, happy-go-lucky, energetic, like, full of, like, you know, I'm ready for whatever throws at me. I'm always interested in these kinds of characters who think they're, like, cut to, for the jib. Like, I just want to see... not. I don't want to see them get ruined and be like, oh, too much for me. I just want to see if they're going to keep that facade, if they're going to change, or if they're going to get worse, you know? But um, this comic really it gives me some high hopes for him. I haven't really gone to the chance to go back through his archives, admittedly. So I'm just kind of hoping for more. Um, in terms of critique, I do want to say that on page four, while that like whole little recap of him be like, huh, you like my chick? Like, I'm here. And you see, I went did, and did this and that. And so if you read my previous comic, you would actually understand. So I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Nudge to the fourth wall. I know. I, um, I found that both good and bad in a way. Like, bad in a sort of scripting sense where it's like, it's kind of awkward to just imagine him saying all this and considering how this duo is kind of like punched him and he got sent flying to the wall, I really don't think this duo would give him the time and day to make this whole narration of, well, I went on this journey and I did this and I got that. But it's also kind of fun. To, it's kind of funny. It made me laugh. I was like, oh my God. He really just recapped it, and then the uh, the artist told me to reread it. Now I'm going to reread <laughs> the comment. <laughs> so, and also I just love I I um I know one of the commenters in the comment section said I I expected this to be a typical damsel in distress situation, and this was actually otherwise. The same can be said for me. I was going through this comment, and be like, oh. This, this art is definitely promising, and I'm looking forward to it, but this writing's not doing it for me until the panel where it's like, whoops, gotcha, you happy-go-lucky types are always the type to look for a damsel in distress, and, you know, it really got me. I was like, oh, hey, you don't see that often. So I do like that little twist there. Um, in terms of art, you know, I'm not gonna jab too much because I... Because I have high hopes. I'm looking at this and I'm like, hell yeah. I can definitely see a, some possible stylization in the future that could be really cool to see. So I just want to do say, I want to like mark on the colors a little. Um, try and do less grayish kind of dull looking colors. Because while they do help give a sense of dynamic in page two's... Um, can't count but the panel where the girl's like "Ooh, i have a lightning fist look at that it really helps stick out the fact that she has this lightning power it just doesn't give a sense of impact to the rest of the comic because it's so muted and so great so i'm not getting this sense of liveliness and thrill that lawson should be giving me as he is in the dialogue so i just say to you know go a little bit out there with the colors give some give um some color palette to soft give us some practice and you know looking forward to seeing more of Lawson keep it up and you know welcome back to Void 
Yeah, dude. Super duper welcome back. I think that you are one of a small handful of return voiders who have come back with a vengeance. And I am here for that chaos right now because the stuff you guys are churning out is super good. Uh, the comment that you got, shocking reveal, that was me. I definitely went in like, oh, okay, one of those comics. Damsel in distress, he's going to save her. And I've seen this a million times before. But you totally hoodwinked me. You done did me, I gotcha. And I found myself smiling going, okay, all right, cool. This is really neat. I sort of agree with Astro's critique in that you had him, what page was it? A recap his entire backstory on page four. And I think you said you weren't sure if that was really necessary or whether that he would have the time. But I kind of think that if you want this to be a wall-breaking character, hams it up and wants to discuss his entire backstory to the reader as well as the characters that he's interacting with you can totally do that but you can do it in a fun way maybe while you know miss sparkles over here is trying to zap him he could be dodging and weaving and going listen you have to listen to the rest of my recap so that you know what i'm about that would have been hilarious as opposed to just mashing this wall of text into one panel which kind of throws not only the reader off but makes you wonder why you know, Sparkles over here just sort of sat there and said, well, I'm going to wait, you know? <laughs> but um, otherwise, I agree that I think the action and impact panels need to be pushed a bit. Like that wham, where he sort of drop kicks the bad guy on page four. Good. I feel that the actual, like, money-making shot where that foot connects with the head, it's kind of nudged all the way to the bottom of the panel. I think that if you had re-angled that whole position and made the focus the foot and the head, as opposed to his entire body, and just a little bit of the bad guy, it would have been more dynamic. But I mean, that's just me going into super duper detail. I do uh, note that the entire comic is pretty dark. And while this is set at night, I think that you definitely need to look into some uh, tutorials on how to get light sources despite it being nighttime so that it's more dynamic. I think that you tried for some spot blacks or cross hatching on page two with the bad guy approaching your hero, but it seems a bit scratchy and I'm not sure if you followed through on all of it page to page. I think you did. I also like the nod to your uh, line handle with the graffiti and the Oberon goat. I noticed that. Just wanted to put that out there for you. And I hope to see you in another battle with another opponent in which you can totally have your guy, like, monologue and have a setup for laughs. Uh, Ober Goat, welcome back. Um, and, and everything that I was going to say kind of already got said by Astro and Cozy. It's uh, good to see you back. <laughs> <laughs> good reversal with the plot. Um, twists. Uh, listen to what they say about the the exposition dump. It probably wasn't necessary at all, but if you're going to use it, use it to some use it to some greater effect. And uh, I hope this is not the last time we see you, because you have tried returning once before, and we didn't get to do much after that. Uh, you didn't get to do much after that with the site. Uh, so I hope that uh, your return this time is going to be here for for good, at least for another year or so. Cause we want to see more. <laughs> On the topic of of having um, dark colors going on here, uh, just a little suggestion. Just like um, you know, pop the picture somewhere where you can look at it on your phone. Look at it at the brightest setting. And be like, okay, I can see this much, and then turn turn the brightness all the way low. If you cannot see your background, and it just looks completely black, you might want to brighten things up a little. That's my only suggestion for like making sure that it's not super black because like not everyone's gonna read a comic at full brightness. Like me, I want to save my battery, so <laughs> so just be just be mindful that um just be mindful and also send the comic to like you know other homies so they can be like I can't see this or you should work on that X Y Z all of that. But yeah, that's for me. 
Also, one last thing, and it's not just this comic, but just the wealth of Beyond Battle and the Magical Tournament Round 2. These are all in... I don't know when this is going to go up, but they are all in dire need of and critiques, so I fully, fully encourage everyone to comment on these, because these are all really good. Yes, oh, yeah. more commenting and critiquing from everyone else. We're off the hook, because we got it all here yeah. <laughs> recorded <laughs> that's, on voice. That's the best part. Oh, listen, I commented on all of these, and I'm on VCast, so if you want to be extra, you should totally do that. Yeah. Hell no. I'm just a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> I did I did what I could. I'm giving up now. I, th I, think, I think recapping and reviewing every single comic that has gone up since VCast has started has me has me clear no oh, hell yeah <laughs> and that is the last comic for the night uh, i want to thank cozy spoon for joining us boogity bizdo for joining us for the first time uh boogity is there anywhere on the internet that we can find you uh a deviantart or a twitter or anything like that i do have a twitter uh go ahead uh, and tell us it the handle is a uh... The passion and then underscore capital B capital F. Oh, that's cool. I think I linked it to uh, to uh, on the my intervoid profile. It should be on there. So. Cool. And uh, this has been Pyrus Terran. And this is Astro. And, we'll and Cozy Spoon, you know me. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time. Cozy, I'm tired of you interrupting us. <laughs> <laughs>